Good morning. Uh, I want to say thank you to everyone that bought training and a big shout out to the people who are about to buy training. And shout out to the, the Nerd Tribe for your well constructed comments. Um, this is about being homeless. At one point in my life, I was homeless. And the economy was pretty good. So after a lot of introspection, after a lot of examination, I realized that I became homeless because of bad decisions. And this has recently happened. As you know, I keep in contact with a lot of people to help me gather real world data points for the YouTube videos. And this happened yesterday. I believe this is the first time in my life I've ever given a homeless person money. I, this is what I did. Like, you know, typically everywhere I go, uh, I use a credit card. But when I get my car washed or when I get certain services done, it's best to tip in cash. So I actually had some cash in the pocket of my car and I was getting some gas. And this guy who was homeless, I, pretty much assumed he was homeless before he walked up and he didn't hit me with the pitch he actually had a conversation I don't know if that softened me up or whatever but I actually ended up giving the dude 10 bucks and um, I you know realize that during the great reset during the recession Homelessness is going to spike. It's going to spike. And this is something that I brought up in earlier videos. And a lot of guys were like, no, no, no. When I said that women were going to become extremely compliant in these hard times. I personally know of not one, but two women who got married extremely quick because they were um, dealing with hard times. One of them wanted to move in with me and I was just like, they ain't gonna work. Cause you know, and th this is one of the things and ladies, I want you to understand the sex with this chick was fire. She had the wetter than wet wet. But outside the bedroom, everything else was a disaster. And I, I am old enough and wise enough to know that just having good sex is not enough to keep a relationship. And I knew this about her because she consistently made bad decisions. So we just parted ways and then she's also gotten fat. I did a video. She got extremely fat and she found this dude who wiped her up. And what you're going to see is a spike in cohabitation, a spike in uh, marriage. You will have a lot of women getting marriage during these hard economic times. You will have a lot of women getting married because marriage is a form of security for women. And this kind of brings me to the situation. I learned yesterday that this girl who is homeless got married. She met a dude and marry the dude in one month. And now the dude's abusing her. 
he's actually putting his hands on her. And I'm just sitting there just just taking all this in because um this is something that's going to be <clears throat> pretty common across the economy across the United States population. Um you're going to see a rise in domestic abuse. And I'm going to say something. As a man that has a lot to offer, I am very hesitant to marry any woman unless she's worth it. Because I, I, I know my worth in society and just for me to meet someone and marry someone within a month or two. That's just crazy. That's just crazy. So as a man, if you're willing to marry a woman extremely quickly, there are some issues with you, in my opinion. Uh, there are cases of people who met each other and fell madly in love and got married in three, four weeks. And 30, 40 years later, they're still married, happily married. It happens. I don't think that's the norm. I think that's very atypical. Bless those couples who can find that kind of love. But right now, I am just looking at this person's situation. And it all started with one very bad decision. And even though the economy is going to melt down, the economy is going to melt down. Uh, we've got six days away from the elections. You're going to see a big drop in the stock market. You're going to see a big drop in crypto. You're going to see a lot of stuff drop once the election is over. And I was sitting there thinking of her situation and, you know, I have learned that when you, you know, from my Craigslist protocols, I've learned a lot about women. And I, I know that women who are in desperate situations will come with some of the best sex you've ever had. Some of the best, I will make you come so hard, your balls will ache. Um, I've, I've been there, I've seen that. And I have refused to allow any of these women to move in with me and I have not married anyone now let's talk about I am in a relationship and my current relationship is a trust fund baby she has good credit she has parents and whenever she's been in a state of need, her parents have given her money. She has not asked me for a penny since we've been in a relationship. She's not asked me for any money. I mean, she doesn't really cost me money. She's not an expensive girlfriend. And this is one of the reasons that we're in a relationship is because she has a solid foundation. I, you know, to my credit, I have refused to invest in women who were in a descent, who were going down. I have no cape. I have no captain save a whole energy because I know ultimately that if you get with these women, what do they tell you when a person's drowning? Don't let them drown you. And typically, I have seen all kinds of stuff. I have seen uh, women with $150,000 of student loan debt. Um, just, just a bunch of stuff. But I sit here and I think about the number of people who are about to become homeless. And my heart aches for these people because I know what it feels like to not have a place to go lay your head every night. 
I know what it feels like to be transient. I know what it feels like to be uprooted and uncomfortable. And for some reason, and this is something I don't think I've ever brought up before. Um, I had the option to move back home with my mother when I was homeless. And I did not exercise that option because I was like, something just told me that if I moved back home, I was going to get stuck. And I just stayed up here in Atlanta and I kept fighting and kept fighting and I worked my way out of it. And this is the foundational thesis for most of my teachings, because in the United States of America, there's a multitude of opportunities. There is no shortage of money. Money is literally everywhere. When you go down the street and you see these buildings, someone owns these buildings. You can literally go a mile down the street and see a trillion dollars worth of wealth. Money is not the problem. There's no shortage of money. There's no shortage of opportunity. There's no shortage of any of the things that constitutes building money. There, there is no shortage. Now, what I have seen, I was reading an article this morning talking about millennials were abandoning the stock market and moving heavily into real estate, which I feel is a smart move in into crypto, which I don't think is a smart move. Uh, real estate, I, we're going to have a correction and we're going to have segmented market crashes. Real estate as a whole is not going to crash. Interest rates are not going to crash the real estate. Interest rates can hit 10% and you will still have people buying houses. You still have people buying houses. And because the track record for real estate is durable and quite strong. If you over, even if you bought a house during these crazy times, if you stay in it long enough, you'll be okay. So real estate is a proven way to hold wealth, maintain wealth, and to get wealthier. So I actually see why so many people are piling into real estate. And one of the things that I am also seeing, because once again, there is no shortage of money. There is no shortage. There is plenty of money out here. And if you end up homeless, it's not because of the economy. It's because you have made bad decisions. Maybe you married the wrong person. Maybe, you know, in the case of this person, because I'm just perplexed and bewildered at this whole situation. Um, because once again, I have no cape. I have no captain save a whole tendencies. I will let you swing because I have realized based upon my personal experience of being homeless and climbing my way out through number one, I had to change my habits. That's the first thing that had to happen. I had to change my habits, I had to change my behavior. And then two, I had to work my ass off. And when I tell people that, because everyone is looking for a hack or a shortcut and versus being properly positioned. Um, once again, this lack of understanding, this fundamental lack of knowing how the economy works and you know because like i said you know uh, just hearing this story she met this guy and they got married in one month and you know she she told me some stuff that just literally blew my mind it literally blew my mind and one of the things that is 
evident is this habit of making bad decisions. Very, very bad decisions. Um, but I consistently see over and over and over again that, you know, one bad decision here or there, that's not going to destroy your life unless it's like you decide to rob a bank and you get caught and you go to jail for 10, 15 years. Um, but what I've been seeing is bad decision after bad decision after bad decision after bad decision after bad decision this brings on this moment of reckoning much quicker than um you can imagine and one of the things that's going to happen is you will be alone because here's the thing this is one of the things i discovered during my homelessness journey most of my friends abandoned me. I had one friend who would visit me. Uh, I had developed this kind of sort of working flirtation when I was living in a boarding house. And this girl would not come visit me in the boarding house. She would let me come visit her, but she would not come visit me in the boarding house. So when you move outside of living a normal life, People will look at you differently. People will look at you very differently. And that's where I was. People were looking at me very differently. Um, and this is why, honestly, I had to learn game. I didn't have no money. Uh, I was, you know, between working regular, normal jobs and... I had to learn how to develop game. I had to learn how to seduce a woman. I had to learn how to talk to a woman in a certain manner for me to um, get female companionship. And once I developed those skills, because here, here's the thing, you know, uh, I, I made a remark about passport bras that I'm about to double down on. If you cannot find female companionship in the United States of America, it's you. Because I, as a homeless man living in a boarding house, was able to get, I will put her on the scale. She was a, she was a solid seven. Get us, you know, on. I'll tell you the story. Uh, I worked with her at one of the jobs and she came to visit me and she cooked and, you know, she was in the bed and she in initially did not want to have sex. And at this point, I put her out and it was raining and she didn't, you know, she got there by the bus. So I put her out. Five minutes later, there's a knock on the door and there's her and she's like, OK. And she came in, took her clothes off and got in the bed. See, I did not rape her. I did not. It's like, hey, you don't want to you don't want to do that. You got to go. So I gave her an option. She could go out there, be drenched in the rain or come in and take the dick. And she chose to come take come back and take that dick. Um, I, I learned so much about women developing game not having money i couldn't buy women i couldn't buy attention i couldn't uh i wouldn't i would never even to this day i would never roll up to a girl and say you too pretty to work here i would never never say that but i feel that my homeless phase um put me in a position to win because I had to dig deep internally to bring out my best attributes. I had to dig deep. I had to really, because like, you know, I don't really talk about, but I got a mouthpiece on me. You know, um, 
when there's a chick that I want, I'm going to get her. I don't care if, you know, I'm 56 years old. I'm going to get her. If she's single, she's not married, she's not in a committed relationship, I'm going to get her. And that's why I feel all of this anti-social behavior in the manosphere with the passport bras and the red pill men and the purple pen. I'm going I'm to say something. My game is so strong. I have been caught cheating and the chick didn't leave. That's how strong my game is. That's how strong my game is. And you weak, wet men can't even get a woman and be loyal and faithful. Like I said, I've been caught cheating. Got caught. She was waiting outside the house. And you know what happened? We had a conversation. I went home and she sucked my dick after I got through fucking this other chick. That's why I'm so confident and cocky here on the internet because of experience. How many of you can say that you've gotten caught cheating and then went home and fucked that girl? How many of you can say that? See, being homeless, and this is why uh, I'm not faded by the weak more. This, this is the internet. This is the internet. Homelessness, being homeless is real. Not having a place to stay is real. And this is why, you know, all of the clowns and internet joker and the keyboard work, they don't even fade me. They don't even fade me, man. Because that I can always go back to you were homeless and you climbed out of that and became extremely successful. And one of the things that you have to understand and one of the things that you need to appreciate is um, that real life takes real money and there's this big movement to where quiet quitting people don't want to work or they just want to well you know if you just come to work do what you need to do and go home that's cool that's cool but this whole moving it into low gear I, I read an article of a guy who quit his job and started um, an e-commerce site and he now they, they, they put him out he makes two hundred fifty thousand dollars per month and when I see those articles I as a seasoned entrepreneur can start to calculate he does drop shipping the margins on drop shipping are thin so he might spend 220 to make thirty thousand dollars a month which is still good income that's three hundred and sixty thousand a year still great income but this guy's not a millionaire he's not a millionaire He's a high income business owner, but he's not a millionaire. But once again, this is the Internet. And I see so much things that are going on. And I see the homeless problem getting worse and worse and worse because people are making bad decisions. They're looking here at YouTube University. And they're quitting their job to start a business. And for a lot of people, that's going to end up in a bad, bad future. This is why I also say when you start a business, keep your job. Will you be working harder? Absolutely. You will be working harder. But you will also build a strong foundation of security by keeping your job and starting a business because you will have more money. But once again, um, if you notice, I've changed my messaging. I've changed how I'm talking. And once again, I put out the new thing is to teach people how to become a millionaire in 10 years. And I had one joker who's now been blocked. Well, you know, making a million in 10 years isn't appealing when Alex or Mosey made 100 million in four years. First of all, I don't know, Alex. 
I don't even know if he made the hundred million, but let's go ahead and say Alex made a hundred million. That's one person out of a hundred million. One out of a hundred million people will ever get to a hundred million net worth or a hundred million earnings, period. So once again, I'm operating from the realm of reality. I'm operating because once again, $250,000 a year is life changing money. It's life changing money for the average person. And many of you have these hyper expectations with an average work ethic, which is laughable. You're like, yeah, I'm going to make a hundred million when you can't even work an eight hour shift. Dude, dude, get out of here. That's why you got this crypto name, because you don't know how to work hard. You don't know how to be durable. You don't know how to sustain a durable, hardworking ethic and build something. I mean, it's laughable because one of the things I'm doing is just blocking all of the wet, moist people, blocking them, just keep it moving. But once again, practicality is going to make a comeback. Um, the Andrew Tate's and the Bugatti stuff. Andrew Tate did a wonderful job of getting a lot of attention and it literally blew up his website. He made a lot of money. For every Andrew Tate, you have 10 million people that have failed to make money. So I'm operating from a practical reality. In the teaching and the trainings, you know, for the people who are not in these hyper expectations with an average work ethic, because um, this 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 crypto person, he's he's gotten his name. Your screen name says a lot about you. When I went to block him, all I saw was foolishness. This is not the habits or um, pathway for a person to make substantial money it's just not but the homelessness thing is about to dramatically increase 2023 is going to be a record year for homeless people because right now a lot of people are making some very bad decisions and it's going to show up in their life in the form of something horrible being homeless is horrible it, it is and I would not wish that upon anyone, not even my worst enemies. I, I don't want people to suffer. I don't want people to go through what I went through, being homeless, being hungry. It's terrible. But sadly, unfortunately, this is going to be a big new normal for a lot of people. I was watching all of the living in my car, living in the van videos. These videos are literally blowing up because people are contemplate living in the van. Um, because in their mind, they feel that it's going to be easier. It's going to be less expensive. And I'm telling you, Living in a van is glorified homelessness. It's just a few steps above because living in a van ain't easy. But this is what people feel it will be easier and cheaper than living in an apartment. And it's going to catch up with a lot of people. We're going to see a big change. Big, big change. So here's what I plan on doing. And uh I'll talk about it in the next video because I haven't quite shaped it up. I'm going to work on that today. But yeah, homelessness is about to spike because you have a lot of people who are currently making very bad decisions and it's going to manifest in a horrible future. Just terrible, terrible, terrible.
Thank you.